This video is brought to you by Musicvine. Get five high-end music tracks free by clicking the link in the video description. Hey, how's it going? Good to see you. This is Josh. He's an editor on Star's standout show Counterpart with Academy Award winner J.K. Simmons. Hi, Howard. This is us. It's not glamorous. Nice. I can <laughs> feel the history. We're the first ones here this morning. We have Scott Little as assistant editor is in here. Josh also cut on House of Cards and Bloodline. Maria Gonzalez, he was an assistant last season. She's now cutting. I wanted to shadow him to see what it's like to edit some of the biggest shows in television. Natasha's visual effects. Cool. She's on set in Berlin right now supervising stuff. We have a big 4K TV and they can send the feed in here and so we can see them grade in real time. Oh wow. Jero, he's another editor coming back from last season. I wanted to see how Josh works with specific scenes, but I also wanted to put my focus around five questions. This is the office of my assistant, Ambar, who's not in yet. And this is where I am. What do I do? The police are here. I don't have clear ID. Permission to fire. Take the shot. No, no, stop! There's a lot of stuff going on, right? There are different locations oh, okay. of action, right? You have like up in the balcony, you have down below the stairs, you have the police coming in. There are a lot of different little pieces to juggle yeah. that are all happening at the same time. It's an example of a sequence that got worked on a lot. You're like, oh, that's the scene that is gonna, everyone's gonna be sick of hearing that coming out of my room, mm. like, all season. Very late in the process, I presented an idea of playing the shot on Howard and, and not showing her get shot. No, no, stop! The emotional moment is, like, her death and Howard's reaction. It isn't about, like, the action of her getting, you know, this isn't an action movie in that sense, mm -hmm. right? This is part spy thriller, part science fiction drama, where Simmons plays a low-level office worker at the United Nations Agency in Berlin, only to discover that it's really a gateway to a parallel world. So it's our world, and then you go through a portal, come out the other side, and there's another version of the world that looks very much like our own. And at one point they were the same, and over time they've been slowly diverging and that goes for everybody. So Howard Silk meets his counterpart, his other on the other side, who is very different than he is. I wanna know how you became so different. This is when Howard faces off against himself, basically, in this room. It's like where you might visit a prisoner, and it's just the two of them having it out. It's a scene that I'm most proud of, yeah. and so the, the dailies for this are these very long takes. This is a almost nine minute take, yeah. just of, you know, single on J.K. Simmons. The only other thing I've got is the other J.K. Simmons on the other side. And the only action that is part of the scene is the fireworks, the drama, the exchange of dialogue between the two characters. They're all on that side now on false visas. So we thought you should know. We. Yeah, maybe you thought it would be someone else sitting here. Maybe your ex-wife. It was helpful to really just map that out and know what each section was, was moving toward, each, each turning point. You're mapping that out on the actual script. I'll, first, I'll map it out on the script. I'll take the script and I'll break it down into beats. I'll draw a red line in between each beat where I think each turning point is. Just going into some of my first cuts of this. So I'd arrange it in these chunks. Okay. So the first chunk is he comes in, he sits down, they have their initial exchange, and then things change because he says, They're all on that side on false visas. So we thought you should know. We. Oui. Now, that we, within the context of the scene, has significance. Yeah. That's a turning point. They were talking about their spy business or whatever, their intel that they got, but now it's turned, and now they're talking about their wife. Now the conversation takes you a new... You thought it would be someone else sitting here. Direction. Your ex-wife, maybe? 
The one you told me died of cancer? And so I lay all the stuff out about the wife. And then it's going to turn again. I'm looking. So now th it's been a handoff. Like Howard sort of drove that section. And now Prime, he stood up to leave, and he, but he's not going to get out of the room because he's going to come back at him. Not long ago, I sent you over there. You know, and now he's got the his... Go in the woods. Now he's driving it, and he's moving it forward. And Howard Silk is sitting there taking it. So again, that's another chunk. That's another idea within the scene. And so I just broke it down, just going throughout the whole thing. And then I began refining and building each individual section. So I don't have to keep the entire thing in my brain, and I don't have to feel overwhelmed by a nine-minute take. Then I can start enjoying myself. Mm. Um, but until that happens, it's the worst. Because <laughs> again, each one of these nine minutes. How long did it take you to cut that scene? Like to do a first presentable cut? Two days. Until it comes through this room, it is not recognizable as a movie or a TV show. It's just a jumble of footage to anybody else. This is where what my mom would recognize as a TV show materializes. And I get to be at the very center of that. And so that's very exciting. We really shouldn't be here. Thanks for the intel. I'll look into it. Is there, is there just any truth to you? This scene was so great because there's no problems to fix. Yeah. You're just watching nine minutes of J.K. Simmons do his thing really well. Yeah. I find it interesting how his voice is different between the two. Oh, I mean, he's like everything about what J.K. Simmons did. I mean, I remember when I interviewed for the job, there was some discussion about, well, how do we differentiate between the two? And editorially, what did I think of that? You're enjoying yourself with my family? They hate you. And I got to say, like, I mean, I, I said at the time, like, I would guess you're not going to have to do that much because J.K. Simmons is going to do it for you. Mm. It's going to be clear by the way he moves and walks and yeah. talks who we're looking at. How much denial do you have to be in to continue to idealize her the way you do? I know my wife. What? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't think I caught that. And the director gave me everything that I needed and it was well written. It was just like, okay, this is all good. How do we just get the best out of this, yeah. you know? How does he, by the way, do the playing himself? Like, right. Do they read the lines? Do they yeah, so them? it's actually one of two ways. It's kind of interesting. This is shot just for the back of J.K. Simmons' head. He's playing opposite his double. Mm -hmm. So that's his double. Right. And so it's just giving him timing. It's giving him an eye line. It's giving him something to see. And so it's then, a double an actor or just a dude? You know, I don't, I don't, I never, I never met him. He does well. I mean, he, he, it's not like he's just there. Yeah. He's giving J.K. Simmons something to react off of. Yeah. And then they'll flip around. They'll shoot the front of J.K. Simmons. And then we got the back of the double's head. Um, and of course, they would have shot the back of J.K. on this side. And, and we just marry him up. Can um, we listen to one of those interchanges, how that plays? Sure. In the, in the Raw Dailies? Yeah, yeah. 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 Three names for you. Oscar Wolf, Helen Muller. So that's just the double going, right? We've been helping you. We, again. You have feelings for her, Howard? So it's kind of neat. There's another scene I can show you. That's it's kind amazing of, how, like, J.K. Simmons' voice is already, like, this powerful, like, without yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It's, it's true. Yeah, and so, I mean, I can show you how this gets built. This was a cool shot. Before we move on to the next scene, I want to take a brief moment to thank Musicvine for their support. All music tracks used in the video come from their awesome library and Musicvine is offering you five free web licenses for pre-selected tracks right now if you sign up by clicking the link in the video description. In addition, they're offering a 50% discount on your first license purchase from a special playlist I created for you. So do check that out as well when you click the link. Now back to Josh. I mean, I can show you how this gets built. This was a cool shot where you've got the devil and you know he crosses himself and the camera pulls back to get us into this room and it's like well how do you marry that up? Yeah. Um, the way they do this it's motion control camera yeah. so they program the move 
once they decide on the hero, like, okay, this is going to be our linchpin, then they'll repeat it, you know, with JK now playing what the double was. This will be the exact same camera move as what I just played before. And they leave the double there so that, because they need him to cross, right? So they need a clean piece of him. Okay. And then on our end, we did a very rough comp that looked like this. My assistant did this. I'll make up the couch for you. So that's a key-framed animate. Yeah, she just rotoed out. Do you want to see the before? Yeah, yeah. This offline media is all the, the effect shots that ultimately got done. I'll make up the couch for you. So you can see where it gets matted out. And you can see when they cross, obviously, it gets futzy. Yeah. But for the purposes of evaluation and to see how it all goes together, you get the idea. Yeah. And, and so then how do they do the shot? They do it in After Effects in-house or do they give no, it No, it, got, it gets sent out. So okay. this became a shot for our visual effects vendor. So I needed to sort of build these, however rough, as I went to make sure. And then I would hand the sequence off much to my assistant's dismay, right? I'd be like, okay, I have another version. If you can clean up the comps and make it look nicer. So you are the assistant editor for Josh? Mm -hmm. And how's it working with Josh? It's great. It's really great. <laughs> okay. That's the safe answer. No, cool. I really like him. So what's your main job? Every morning I bring in dailies for Josh and we get them in these bins, dailies by day. She's going to check sync. She'll get paperwork from the script supervisor, camera reports, sound reports. Everybody's listing what was shot, and she needs to make sure that what she's giving me is everything that was shot. Yeah. Because I don't want to end up uh, in here with the director saying, hey, what a, how come you didn't use this? I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't see that. Um, that's embarrassing for me. It's bad. I need to know. So that's like a really important uh, job is that reconciliation that happens in the morning on ingest yeah. into the system. Basically group them, organize them, and then I put them in the scenes to cut. We work on shared storage. My assistant sees this same project tree. I have a, a folder called scenes to cut and I have a folder called scenes. Once she has prepped a scene for me, she puts that bin in the scenes to cut and lets me know that a given scene is ready. This is my first TV show. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Did you features. Feature. Okay, nice. So it's, it's a whole different workflow. Well, how is it different? Um, with features, especially with my editors who are more old school editors, simply even simple things like the bin, they liked it more in this view where I would put descriptions in here. Yeah. What's that, the script for you, or what is this called? I think it's thumbnail script. I'm not sure exactly what okay. it's called, but then Josh likes it this way. It's a lot more visual and not that many descriptions. Some editors might work like this in script mode or in list view, or yeah. I, I don't know. Every editor in Avid is going to organize their bins differently, but everything gets group clipped. So here's an A and B camera. Um, and then here's the group clip of those two, two shots. So and this is like a Mickey up. Mouse ears. Yeah. So I'll keep both up and they're arranged in this sort of upside down triangle configuration. Visually, I can look at this bin and I can get sort of a top overview of the setups. This is a bigger one maybe. Again, here's my master. Here are these medium shots. I have these reverse angles on him. Now, do you ever use these to actually cut or you always cut from this one? I'll almost always cut from the group clip. There's no reason not to in Avid. So it's just a visual reminder to you that there are two angles and what they look like. Exactly. If all I had in my bin were the group clip, because some people just put the group clips in. Some people don't want this much stuff in their bin. Yeah. But I, I like it because I, I don't have to load this clip and flip back and forth between between the angles, you know, to, to see that's what actually a great tip. I don't use that. No, I will. I like that. And it um, feels very contained too, which is nice. Like it feels like this scene, I can like easily grasp what I have. Yeah. This is definitely one nice thing about the Avid and that the bins, unlike Premiere or whatever, yeah. they're, they're very free flowing. It's really like a palette and you can arrange it however you want. Yeah. Most editors I know, this is sort of 
some version of this. Is do you ever do state. select reels or that's it? It depends on the sequence. It depends on the, on the type of um, scene that I'm cutting. If it's a dialogue scene that's very performance based, I don't do select reels. If you want, I can kind of take you through how I do it. This is what a scene might look like when I first put it together. Real simple. Just pretty much, for the most part, we're talking about straight cuts. Something I'm missing, Howard. Could you fill me in, please? This is sort of like a selects reel in order of the scene. Midnight Station called me two hours ago. Takes that I like, readings that I liked. Your department? Why well, don't I? Know. Ooh, housekeeping? Could be. Could be fourth floor. Some of it is going to end up working okay, some of it won't. I'm not really worrying about, you know, matching or audio glitches or whatever. I checked your hours. I'm just trying things out. Darren, I want to know why. So here, here's a scene that has a lot of coverage, right? Mm -hmm. I don't like first cuts. So I'll usually watch all the dailies, and then I'll just say, screw it, I'm just going to grab the last take. And it sort of depends on the director, because some directors it becomes very clear that they're very specifically going for something like after you watch the dailies you see that they're driving to something specific and then they'll usually get that by the second last take maybe the sec second to last take is maybe the one because maybe the last take was just sort of like okay letting the actors try something or whatever for yeah. safety it doesn't really matter yet i know the coverage and i'll come up in my head with like sort of a design for the scene what's the most important thing and I'll just load the last take of each setup and I'll just sort of drive through each one and I'll, I'll cut in like, oh, I like that reading there and I'll drop it in and then I'll, I'll load the, the next last take and I'll go, okay, I'm probably gonna go to the close here, you know, for this moment, I'll build that in. I end up with just a rough approximation of the shape of the scene. That sort of gets me over the hump. And then I go back I'll start finessing it, and that's when I go into the other takes to find better versions of, of what I'm doing. The most important thing is just to move. I asked Josh how to become a TV editor, and I'm gonna to get to that in just a second. But there were many more topics that we talked about. If you click over on Patreon, I'll have two additional videos. One is gonna be for free, you don't have to sign up, and it's gonna be specifically how I worked with music in this episode in conjunction with Music Vine. I'm gonna just turn off what he says, and then I'm gonna to have to fill the sound hole here eventually. The other video is questions that the Patreon members had directly for Josh. Chris wants to know what's the software you use? Avid. Um, How do you see the future? I see the future within my corner. How do you deal with the crazy short turnovers? <laughs> Are you involved at all in pre-production? Do you have any interaction with the director? So in TV it's a little bit different than features. And that How do you deal with notes that you disagree with? That's a good question. Do check out the Patreon community. And with that, let's find out what's the best way to break into TV editing. If you want to work in television specifically, you need to become an assistant first. It can happen without doing that, but I think that is the exception that by no means proves the rule. But if you want to work on TV shows uh, on HBO or Netflix or Stars or whatever, um, they're still gatekeepers, and the way you get in is by being an assistant. Do you want to eventually end up being an editor? Or... Of course. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's what I want. So you that's get to goal. cut some stuff as well? Um, just little rough cuts here and there. Just, I'm still learning. Now, how do you become an assistant? Well, first you have to know the tools. That part, you know, is relatively easy. And then you just have to get in the mix, right? You have to like, because I didn't start doing this, like I started cutting weddings and I actually learned a lot. If you want someone difficult to please, it's like an unhappy bride and her mother. That led into corporate work. Then that led to um, a guy that had, a, had an old good friend who just so happened to be uh, a television editor. And he said, I could put you in touch. And I worked with him for a number of years. He mentored me, basically. A really talented editor, Scott Vickery. And then I ended up working with a lot of his editor friends and assisting for them. I did that for about five years. And in the meantime, I was trying to cut whatever I could. 
My first real break, like my first credit, came about because of a PA that I had worked with as an assistant. You got, uh, got a... Yeah. And I don't, I don't wanna... And so you just never know like where that door is gonna crack open. You know, so be nice to the PA that you work with. Very nice, thank you. Thanks, Ben. I hope it's good. Oh, yeah. It's a real treat to be able to see work in progress. A big, big thank you to Tammy Ann Kasper from MRC, Justin Marks, Todd Brown, and the people at STARS for letting me hang out with Josh and allowing us to take a closer look at some scenes. Do let me know in the comment section if you like this type of content, watching editors or any other types of filmmakers at work. Don't forget to check out the link to Music Vine to get your five free music tracks. And I thank you for watching.